the chaos reign. Chaos reign presents protect Zaddy at all costs with special guest Virgil Berry broadcast February the 6th, 2022. Enjoy. Real Solutions hosted by Tyrone Thompson at TalkRealSolutions.com are the views of Tyrone Thompson and do not reflect the views of TalkRealSolutions.com, YouTube, or etc. The content here belongs to Talk Real Solutions and its many contributors. Views and opinions expressed by all contributors belong to them and not TalkRealSolutions.com or Tyrone Thompson, the host, or etc. All data and information provided on the site is for informational purposes only. Talk Real Solutions makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, correctness, suitability, or validity of any information on this site and will not be liable for any errors, omissions, or delays in this information for any losses, injuries, or damages arising from its display or use. All information is provided on an as-is basis. In the world where there's crime, corruption, violence, murder, rape, theft, and all forms of atrocity that plague the world in which we live in today. What are you witnessing? We are living in a state of chaos. And it'll take more greater or extreme chaos to restore the order in which the world we live in today. Hello and good evening, people, black people. This is Chaos right here. And today's stream. <laughs> Let's just say um it's gonna be touchy, but nonetheless has to be examined and discussed nonetheless. Well before I give you the details and the title of today's stream, 
I would like everybody to go to talkrealsolutions.com. On the talkrealsolutions.com, you'll see a three-point plan for black empowerment, black achievement. And under that three-point plan, you'll see a list of black established banks located here in the United States of America. I think there's like maybe under 30 banks still present, still standing. Could be wrong, but nonetheless, all that information is on the website. So check out Talk World Solutions website today. Oh, and also, there's latest articles and news. If I didn't say that, I'll say it again. Also, you can now add Talk World Solutions on Facebook, the special page on Facebook, where if you like the page or follow the page, you will be invited into the private little chat room here on TRS, Talk Real Solutions. And trust me, guess what? Funny, interesting. Most things go down in the DM are politics, jokes, things about what's going on, presence, nonsense. But nonetheless, you will not know unless you're subscribed to the Facebook page and like the page. So go to Facebook and find Talk Real Solutions on Facebook and join the group today. Also, Talk Real Solutions on YouTube as well. Same name, same line, Talk Real Solutions. I think right now it has like over 100 subscribers on the Talk World Switch side of things. So the channel is trying to grow. So I'm not sure if the best saying to go, we build it as we fly. I will say personally, that never gets old to me. So that's the um, the moniker. But like I said, you could um, go to um, YouTube and you can find this episode and many other episodes on the YouTube side of Talk Real Solutions. So you can subscribe to that channel today if you want. And also you can um, donate or support the show through the, the tab or any links that's left under each recording of Talk Real Solutions. And as you know, I go by the name Chaos Rain. You can now subscribe to the Chaos Rain channel on YouTube as well. Make sure you hit the red button, top bell, notification bell, where you get the uploads and live streams of the Chaos Rain channel. And also, while you're on the channel, you'll see a about section of I have a Twitter, and I have a Facebook, and I have a Discord service now. So you can add me on Twitter at ChaosRain7, and you can follow me on Facebook by the name of Eric Rain on Facebook, and there is also a Discord server. So, you know, all the information is on my page on YouTube, so find the links, join me, subscribe, wherever you want. And, you know, follow the rain today. <laughs> and that is all the links. So now, now to the title at hand, and let's get down to business. The title for today's stream, Chaos Rain Presents. Protect Zaddy at all costs. And I have a special guest, first time here on TRS. And I could say... First hand, and I'm never wrong that this brother right here is going to be up and rising in a many space throughout social media and YouTube. Trust me, if I said it first, I say it first. So when people go back, they know when they find this man, they said Chaos Rain said it first. Better believe that. So now open lines for the one and only Virgil Berry. Virgil, you there? Yeah, I'm here, brother. All right, all right. What's good, bro? What's good? What's good? Welcome. Oh, man, I'm, just, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me, man. I just came from the casino and came up on a little bit of money, so I'm feeling real good right now. Mm-hmm. I can smell money right now in the air right now. I love it. <laughs> I'm loving all of it. So welcome for the first time here on the Chaos Rain um, slash podcast channel here. So before we go into this title... I like to take a step back in a moment of time where we move onward in the present and we're going to shoot forward to the future. So for the first time here on TRS, tell people a little bit about yourself. All right, no doubt. Well, like, like my man Chaos Rain said, my name is Virgil Berry. Um, my YouTube page is Ace Real Talk Podcast. You know, subscribe, like, share, and comment. And uh, I'm just a guy from out of Columbus, Ohio. I had a lot of life experiences, you know what I mean? And uh, over these years, I've done a lot of thorough, heavy research into various topics and issues and subjects. 
and I'm just here just to uh, basically share everything that I have amassed over the years because what I noticed is in the mainstream media, they don't talk about the stuff that I've researched. And I think it's mm-hmm. high time that we start dissecting this stuff and what better way to do it than to support each other on this here YouTube and bring awareness to everybody who might not be privy to this information. Excellent, excellent. So let's get down to it. So in your mind, Virgil, when the word social media, what really comes to mind to you? Well, you know me, Raymond. The first thing that comes to my mind is I take the word media out and I put engineering next to it, social engineering. Because that's what it is. It's an engineering society to think and move in a certain way based off of the, you know, we'll call it propaganda in the way it's being promoted and pushed to us through social engineering or what we know as social media. Now, let me just say this real quick, quick too, right? Mm-hmm. Now, think about it, y'all. Social media, when we think about social media, there's really nothing social about it because everybody's at home and their computers are on their devices mostly by themselves. And you are not really interacting with each other physically. We're acting with each other, interacting with each other digitally. So there's really nothing too much social about that in the aspect of what we as humans know social to be, because we automatically uh, associate the word social with physical interaction with each other. But now it's become digital. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's funny, um, Virgil. Um, I never really look in much about the real effects of social media from what I've learned throughout the years. Oh, before we go further, can you say you're um, a seasonal brother? You're like in your mid or early 30s, Virgil? No, I'm 40. I just, turned, I just, I literally just turned 40 like two weeks ago. Oh, that's what's up. 82, baby. That's what's up. All right, all right, all right. So I, I Actually, think it was called, January, yeah, uh-huh. January 8th was my birthday. Oh, excellent. So you're Capricorn. One foot, one foot, one foot. Yeah. That's good, that's good, that's good. Yeah, um, yeah. Very, oh, you're up there. Okay, good, good. Um, 40 years so, young. Yes, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, um, I never really see the, really understand the social media things when I was examined now for the last couple of years because like you, depending on how, how long you've been interacting and participating in social media, to me well, it was like almost, mm, I can't say yesterday, but if I had to do the math, I would say for the last maybe 17 years, maybe. Yeah. And I'm just, I was pulling a number because at the time, the first thing I've noticed, remember, was was it MySpace? And I'm not sure if I created an account at the time, but I was not really on it like that. I was like, you know, this is like boring. But as time progressed into we're going on to the 29, 2010, is the time when I started now embark in what we like to call in social media. Right. And that's almost a whole decade, if you think about it. Because yeah, I, it, that's a total time. And at that time, the, the social media I entertained, at the time that was popping, was Facebook. And we already know the issues right now going on Facebook right now. As I'm noticing, right. they said they're losing money. And it's not just because they're losing money. They're losing money because people right now are bored with Facebook. Right. And Facebook's not even 20 years old yet. It's now going to be about 18 years in the next couple months. Right. And it's already people are already slowly diversing, divesting themselves away from Facebook and moving on to another platform that's more interactive. And I think the reason what killed Facebook is because they sold it to the bigger heads. You get me? Right. And when you sell right. to the big heads, what's the thing that they demand for you? Profit. Not loss. Exactly. And then right now, last I'm checking, I'm not going to read the article, but someone's circling on my feed that is now a barking $2 billion right now. Which oh, is really. Again? No, it's Facebook losing money by the billions now. They're losing $2 billion right, right. now. But that's right. nothing to compare it to how much they immense over the last 10 years. Like even they when they went compare. public. Because right. if I remember their, their marketing was. When the, and ads alone, they made roughly over forty billion dollars. Right. So if you think that it's a lot of money, it is to someone that is not of a network of some something. You get me? Yeah. So yeah, 
But you, you could say some. Um, I just want to lay out the history of that from my perspective. Right, no, that, 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 was, that was a good assessment. And if we want to be all the way uh, accurate with it or as accurate mm-hmm. as possible, the social mm-hmm. media thing can say, we could say its inception came in in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. Remember back in the day uh, when they had the message boards and they had the AOL Yahoo. and all of that stuff? Yeah, yeah Yahoo I, and all of that I heard stuff. about it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. that's like basically was the inception of the uh, social media aspect as far as like interacting with people, you know, over mm-hmm. online. At first, it was like it was message boards and chat rooms, and then it grew and grew into what it is now. Now with Facebook, Facebook is a whole different machine because uh, it may seem as if they're losing money now, mm-hmm. but the whole, and this is what I'll be going in a lot about too because Facebook. People might be led to believe that Facebook was a something that Mark Zuckerberg created while he was in college at MIT and all of this stuff, you know, to mm-hmm. so college that's students what they, that's what interact they told with us. each other. Yeah, yeah, that's what mm-hmm. they tell us. But what they didn't tell us was that Mark Zuckerberg was being funded by Incutel, which is the CIA's uh, venture capitalist uh, division that invests money in upstart tech companies like Facebook. And um, so when you follow this path, what you see is that it may seem on the surface that that was Facebook was for, but this whole purpose was designed to gather and siphon our information from us. Yeah. You hear me? That we give away freely in exchange for interaction on this platform. But this whole purpose was to do what it's doing now. They changed their name to the Meta, to Meta, mm-hmm. and now mm-hmm. they bought Oculus out about nine years ago. So now mm-hmm. the whole purpose and premise of Facebook was to basically get us all in, right, but to all desensitize us because we've been interacting digitally on their platform, and mm-hmm. now we're being primed and prepped for the metaverse to interact mm-hmm. with Facebook fully invasive. I'm talking about on some Ready Player One type stuff. Virtual reality. We're now yeah, approaching. Yeah, augmented reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, virtual, and hold, hold, let me just say this real quick, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Virtual reality and augmented reality combined to what we have, or uh, what they call mixed reality. We got a slight depiction of it in Spider-Man: Far From Home. Oh, okay, Far From Home. Okay, okay. Far from home. You know, I yeah. watched that movie. I gotta look at that movie. But I know there was another yeah, movie that came out. That out. Another movie that came out was Player One. It was another one. Ready Player One. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, if you if you recall, Virg, before those movies came about, they always been talking about virtual reality, and this is a, right. a process back in the nineties. If people remember playing video games from Nintendo, they was always experimenting, taking things from physical to digital. You get me? Right. And people must understand the technology was not so advanced that we have now, but it was there. But it was something that they right. were trying something to see what are the interaction, what the effects. Now most people didn't really bought into it because they're saying it's cool, but it's not something that could capture your imagination because the technology, the imagery was not strong enough. But now because we are now in the era of 5G now, everything is now possible with much more fast bandwidth, internet, all things that's automated can be automated much easier now because we're moving more faster in the West. And for, for, For now, outside of America, everybody's already up in this this G in advance to next G rate right? because they're already far ahead in America. And there's good reason for that. Right. But back to the point ahead that virtual reality has been always an experimentation in the process for some time now. And I would say personally it's a military experiment if you want to go any deeper besides the video game right. aspects. Because how you can desensitize people to go out on a field and do what they do. You have to create a virtual background of them in a simulated game to feel as though that Doing it is okay and comfortable because your mind and your eye flows. So once you see it and you're comfortable with it, now we do it in the real world, it's like nothing. Basically. Right. So right. imagine now right. you go completely fully VR, which we're now at this time now. Now they're going to do even more for a study set how this is going to affect people now. And I tell you, it's going to affect a lot of people. And the reason why, because like our age, that if we interacted, it, it'd probably be for maybe purple serious means or something that's not some too much leisure. Well someone that is wow. feeble mind, that's a Gen Z or we could say as a new millennial Y, I just get create the new label for these new you you, you coming about that 
they're going to be emerged and be completely don't know what they're seeing or doing. They think this is reality. And that's where the danger will be arrived to the people that's coming up. Someone that's like our age, I mean, it, it'll get us, but not much because our brains already developed and we already deal with reality from physical to all tech because we all play video games when we could decipher the difference. Most young people, if they're playing games all day, every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're going to be seriously sensitized. And imagine how yeah. they put in the VR aspect of things. It's a whole different monster, brother. It's a whole, whole different monster. Whole entire different monster. And that's, it's interesting that you bring this up because this is why our generation. How old are you guys? I'm in my late 30s right now. Late 30s. Okay, so you, you are the same generation now. We yeah. are the last generation, the early millennial generation, people born mm-hmm. between like 1980 and 1990. Mm-hmm. 92, we mm-hmm. were the last generation that could remember what things was like before all of this technology came in. So we could remember when there was no internet, when there mm-hmm. was no Wi-Fi. You know what I mean? But this new generation, the later millennial generation and the early now zennial generation, they have been mm-hmm. fully immersed in digitized uh, worlds and uh, platforms. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. my daughter, for instance, she won't remember a time when there wasn't a Facebook, when there wasn't the internet, when there wasn't all of this technology. So, you know, mm-hmm. we got a frame of reference, which is another reason why we were under so much heavy scrutiny. So we like to think that this generation is being heavily programmed. But when we think back, mm-hmm. our generation was just as, if not even more so, programmed. And But like I said, we have that frame of reference. And this is another reason why our generation is so much more or less being targeted on so many different fronts. It's because we are that mm-hmm. last generation that can remember when this technology, we we can remember when it wasn't like this. And y'all got to understand how important and how vital that is to the plan of what's going on and what's coming in as far as the technology now. Because if we can remember a time when it wasn't like this, we can see, like you just said, the changes. And we can start to see the negative effects it have on the society, specifically, especially our own generation, which is the early millennial generation. And, and just to and, expound on that just a little bit more. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. But I said go just ahead. expound on that just a little bit more in depth. You know, I mean, as far as the technology goes, we can see that. Um, how can I say this? As this new technology is coming in heavier and heavier, we can actually see. Like, hold on. Like we being like you said, we're being sold this technology. Like it's cool. It's going to make us better. It's going to enhance us. And it's, it's going to uh, make a superhuman, matter of fact, when it actually is dumbing us down, is desensitizing us, demoralizing us, and turning us into basically robots that are uh, basically controlled by the push of a button through non-physical inputs, which is d- digitally, energetically connecting, syncing, and linking us with this technology to the point to where we're going to be so heavily immersed in it, like you said, these kids, they have no frame of reference, so they're not going to be able to tell the difference between the real world and the virtual world. And matter of fact, they have become so disincentivized that they, in fact, would rather be in a digital world because they don't interact with each other physically no more. Now we got this whole situation going on with the moment, so that's even uh, exacerbating the non-physical interaction. See, we, when we were kids, we, we, we didn't have the Internet. We had to go play outside and stuff like that. You know what yeah. I mean? But as the Internet started coming in when I was in, like, middle school going into high school, I started to – I can even see now when I think back how the technology was having an effect on us then. Just, uh, I just imagine if we had this level of this technology, Facebook and social media, when I was in middle school or high school. You know what I mean? I'd just be thinking about that. So, you know, it, it's it's very – it's very um, important that us early millennials realize how important having this frame of reference is as a relation to the technology coming in now and uh, not just coming in now, but coming in the form and fashion is coming in now real heavy, right in your face. They ain't even hiding it no more. Mm, mm. So. Yeah, man. And, and it shouldn't hide no more because now they are, what's the best word I like to say? Um, <laughs> they have softened the public right. enough. Well, now it's so now yeah. because lay it all in. 
Um, I like to say this. I like to say this. We are primed and prepped as a massive global society to be synced and linked to the metaverse, aka the Oasis Smart Grid. Mm. Matter of fact, we even begging for it as a society. Yeah. And that's but, what's sad right there too. But you know, you know, Virgil, I can see why people will beg for certain things because when there is catastrophes and when there's no answers and people are looking for answers and they're begging higher societies, governments to fix the problem, they will, you know, and they say right. you must be embedded and push, bring into the grid, like you said before, because let's be honest, most people that's dealing with this situation we're dealing with, if you know what I mean, that a lot of people don't want to work. A lot of people, they're afraid they'll get sick or some other issues that will plague them to operate in the society. So they right. are more comfortable at home, sitting on their butts, not doing nothing, but rather say, I'd rather make some money at home. So if they can be work remotely, that's cool. And nothing's wrong with that, but here's the problem. You're very much stepping into a disconnect of reality, people. And think about this. Sam Batten said best, and I had it on my channel, people, if y'all not understand who he is. He had to sit down with another gentleman, and they talk about the disease I call social media disease, where he talks about the effects of social media. And that was back in the early 2000s, like 2002, 2003. And he already, because there was, remember like you said before, they had messenger boards, all that stuff. He knows how people really think and act once they put some through digital imprints. And it becomes problematic, where sometimes they had to shut the chat rooms, the board down because it got too toxic. So my biggest question I asked that same gentleman, Mr. Sam back then, if it's so toxic back then, what makes you think people were not toxic now, back then and now? It's only right. the internet only exudes what they always has been. It reveals the true nature of people, men and including women. Especially right. women. So one thing, it is a blessing and a curse at the same time if you don't know how to use this tool effectively. When I come out with social media, I use it effectively for some time, for as long as I've been on it. I don't play around with it. I don't do funny things per se because I've known that everything you put out in the ether, they know. Yeah. It's an easy digital footprint. Now, not so that you could clean up your digital footprint. You could, and maybe you have to pay money to clean up more. But you must understand, as a person, man or woman, what you think you always put down on the digital side of things, Facebook or any social media, and people know how you behave and react. It's well-structured psychology. It's actually the most sinister type of psychology. We don't have to know Super much. You just tell. Yeah. You I us... believe it. Yeah. Right. Okay. You give us everything we need to know, you know. So, so that's and, it. And, and that's, Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. no, and and uh, yeah, and that's what it's designed to do. Okay, so that's, that's exactly what it's designed to do. See, we being led to think that interacting with this technology via social media, social engineering, that is like I feel like it's making us better. We can communicate with each other. I can sit here and have a whole kind of conversation with somebody in China or Africa or, or in New York or L.A from the uh, comfort of my home, and now with the metaverse coming in, I'll be able to do so digitally, right? Augmented reality, uh, mm -hmm. virtual reality, mixed reality, and I can interact on this uh, platform, you know, and, um, and just like you said, it's just like in the Matrix, just like in uh, Ready Player One, we have these uh, avatars. You know, we got the avatars that uh, represent ourselves. They're basically residual self-images, you know, of Mm -hmm. the mental projections of our, or should I say, digital projections of our physical selves. Mm -hmm. So you know, when we interact with each other on these platforms, we being, you know, it's cool, and it's it's a good thing as far as like making us interact with each other. But look at how we're interacting with each other. We're not interacting physically. We're interacting digitally. So while we being sold, this is a thing that's like somehow making us free. It's actually mm -hmm. enslaving us more so than what we could ever imagine or will be willing to admit. Mm, yeah. I and, and I like what you just said, too. We have to, I always say it, too, and this is it from, I do this for myself, too. We have to watch, and I'm glad you said that, 
or spoke on this. We have to watch how we interact with this technology. We don't want to get so immersed and so involved that we lose touch of reality. And, you know what I'm saying? We uh, use the technology, don't allow the technology to use us. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's basically basically through us interacting with each other through these digital platforms, we're basically um, uploading human consciousness into its collect hive mind collective. Much like how the board from Star Trek The Next Generation was doing. Hmm. And to the point now, Chaos Rain, where resistance is definitely going to be futile once we sync and link our actual brains to the cloud or whatever, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Then our every thought our every thought perception is going to be fed to us from the cloud. So then we're really not going to be able to distinguish between what is real and what's not. And when we think about what's real and what's not real, or we think about the term what's real or real, just think back to the Matrix when uh, Neo first got um, brought to the real world, so to speak, and he did that first thing where he uploaded to the Matrix, and it was on the loan program. There was like a sensory overload for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's something similar to that because we don't know the difference between reality. What's real? When we talk about what's real, we're talking about what we can see, what we can taste, what we can touch, what we can feel, what we can hear. And when we think about that, just like Morpheus told Neo in The Matrix, real is electrical impulses, frequencies interpreted by our brain. So if you didn't get the, if you didn't get the, if you couldn't decode the frequency of your, if your brain couldn't um, decode the information that's being fed to it via the eyes, then you would be what? You would be blind. But on the other hand, chaos, you don't need your eyes to see. So we we, we get into some very, very serious uh, stuff here, and we're going through basically a paradigm shift in human consciousness. And with the advent of the Internet and social media, it's just another way for them to immerse us even deeper, further away from reality, physical interacting with each other, and then getting us digitally to interact with each other. And now we got the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's where is the future now. So before we continue on the conversation, let me give the call number for today's stream. The call number for today's stream is 717-908-1834, access code, Nine one seven three two four pound. I repeat, seven one seven nine zero eight one eight three four. Access code nine one seven three two four pound. Today's stream, Chaos Rain presents. Protect Zaddy at all costs with my special guest, Roger Berry. Now onto this subject of protecting Zaddy. In your mind, who from, I would say, the gender is well known to be protecting this European man slash Caucasian man or what they want to call Zaddy. The man or the woman? From your um, perspective, or from what you notice. I was to say from my perspective and my actual personal experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, and, and this is not on no, no, nothing negative or nothing trying to be on no BS, but un, I mean, undoubtedly it's definitely the females, and for many reasons too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. and, and like I say, man, we have to get to the point to where we have the courage to talk about this stuff. Because as you see, the pushback that is happening, and if we sit here and allow ourselves to be shamed or silent into acquiescing and not saying nothing, then you know everything is going to get even worse. But most definitely, without a doubt especially amongst black people, the females have most definitely been the major purveyors of helping to protect Zaddy at all costs. And, you know, like, it's not even, it's not even deniable. Mm, 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 mm. Um, it almost and, can't even be argued. Mm, mm, yeah. um, from what I've learned, that I always when I look at us as people, I always keep in mind of certain things collective what we do as a whole and now as time progress um, even with the help of social media now and I'm observing yeah there are some birds that will protect other groups 
But we all know when it comes down to the real meat of things, when things really matter and they're very much, I like to say, super silent, is mostly our women are the ones that's well invested in protecting the zaddy. And right. the reason why I said this personally, and I'm not sure if you know this, uh, I sent something to you, that I had one stream I done and I upload on my channel. And as always, as I promote it, one woman had a problem with me um, uploading, or not uploading, but it's already right, there already, but me posting this on people's um, community tab, channel, inbox, whatever you want to call it, on social media. And I asked her why, what's the problem? She had a problem of the word that I put out, um, the danger of divestment. And I'll sit back and say, okay, can you explain this? And from the conversations I heard, and we did go back for shortly. Um, what I've learned is that there is a lot of self hatred to a lot of women in our groups. Yes. And I, and I can't say all, but from what I'm observing, that what happened to Miss Fields a few weeks ago, or actually last month, actually in like end of December, going on New Year. That this woman was not really living very well. That's why no one really gave clear background what she was doing before this happened. From what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing and noticing, because you know most states are racist. Cause you live in Ohio, you know how that that's. Whew, Ohio. And and let me tell you something. There are a lot of great people that come out of certain cities, especially in certain parts of Ohio, that right. we don't talk about. You know, I don't, I'm not well versed of Ohio history, but I know there's some special people that's from there. Trust me. Right. You get me? Yeah. Um, that this woman was engaged in some form of prostitute or sugar baby, what do you want to call it, with this older gentleman, European man, Caucasian man, and she met her end through drug overdose. For for now, what is revealed, and what right. they found is. She was had there was a used condom, used already, some oils like you know lube oils that for people that do um anal sex that was there, and a lot of things. So I'm thinking saying you don't know this person that you interact with, and we're not sure if he was really at fault. But no, say you were engaged in certain high risk drugs, that most black people on the average, and you know this personally, that we don't engage in because we know it's gonna hurt us and potentially take our lives. Infinities, right. those things that white people use, white boys especially use, those things they can handle, but you don't see most black people messing with those type of heavy drugs like that. Besides right. weed and maybe some back in the 80s cocaine, maybe. But not those. Right. Those things would will end you. And that was found in her system when she met her end. You get me? Right. So back to the conversation I had with this lady. In her mind, she feels that I'm promoting and creating fear to other women and young black girls or older black women or wherever to not to explore their options. And that I'm baiting and switching them to not do it because of this incident. And I told her that I don't really care much. I don't pick sides of whatever happens. My thing is I put out content then list of what I see as a problem. And what's been trending and circulating. And up here in the East Coast when this happened is that this is something that people are going by what they heard from other outlets. And I just sit there and pull up certain old articles. I mean, no articles. I pulled some articles from the Times and famous newspaper articles from that same state. One of them, I think, was the Harvard Current. And it's one of the, one of the few old newspapers outlets that still exists in America. Because it's been around since the late 1600s. So I'm going to say other news outlets are credible, but it would be better to pull up somewhere in a source where it's close that's talking about it. You get me? Yes. So me and her had this conversation, and in her mind that, because you know most women, they think they're feminists, and they think that they, when they talk about um, being black, she referred to it as, pro-black man. 
just like you hear some dude say that when you're black, you're pro black woman. And I'm sitting back and analyzing the two of them say, where do these niggas get this shit from? Usually last time you black, you black. Where is it you're pro of some other gender? It's Negro thinking. It's backwards thinking, brother. I never heard this is something new to and I'm thinking that this is something that women created because I don't hear most men talking about saying when you pro black you you're a pro black woman. And mass. I hear it in the in the mass or certain things, but now I'm hearing this from women. Now I'm confused, say where does shit come from that, that if you're black you're pro one gender? That's something new to me. Have you know the history of this, Virgil, before I move on? Because I I never heard this. Like I say that if you're black you're only one gender. Have you been hearing this? No one's seen this? Um I haven't heard it in the in the sense of like in the social media or like on social media platforms, mm-hmm. but I understand the sentiment. And when I think about such things related to it, I can see why people would associate that though. Mm-hmm. But I, I can't. I'm not going to there and say that uh, I, in my personal experience or even outer experience, or, you know, wider experience, seeing that. Um, being pro-black has been associated with being of one gender. Yeah, this is some new thing, bro. But that... specific to one gender of black people. Yeah, one said it said either you're pro when you're pro-black or wherever the case may be, is you're pro-black this gender or pro-black this gender. And last time I check, you are black people unless you're not. But I'm not gonna right. go deep in that rabbit hole. But the base, the purpose of it is the back and forth. It got interesting and even to the point now. Where you know she has a kid and she wants her own kid to, she wants well to date out in a way, and not only that, but not to deal with anybody that's darker than her. And she's a lighter skin skin sister, or maybe she's well, mixed. I don't know. So when when I, when, I, when I hear her thinking and how she thinks it, yeah, it would make sense that you would have a problem with this title, because you think that me as man, I have the power to tell women really what to do. And if it bothers you, it tells me what you're doing, you're not comfortable with your own skin going and dating out. You want to still live in a fantasy world that everything's going to be nice and peaches cream, peaches and cream over there. And I'm saying that's not the case. These, not at all. These non black people, Hispanic, Asians, Arabs, and Caucasian men, they're not all in the happiness or so frills that I'm looking for a black woman or what they call black bitch. No. They're not really thinking or say we're pursuing and we need this. You get me? They've taken yes. women that are reflective of them or whiter. Now if you're light skinned and you still carry that mentality and some partial black, you might and I said might make it. But overall when most race at the end of the day they look for something that looks almost similar to them in every aspect. So that's why when women say that, that we just never gave him a shot or try, you don't have to give a shot or try. If a man wants you, he would express it not only verbally but in action and in all other outlets. That's He's not bad. doing that. He's not doing that because he knows that at the end of the day, I must keep the dominance and my genetics and even go as far as my money all for myself. Right. When they give money to Negroes, they give Negroes the trinkets. Well, they got the whole bag. The leftovers. Right. Those little subsidy checks, those things with the gold sacks or putting money in certain institutions, that's for them to get get back the money back to themselves tenfold. People don't invest in you unless they know they're getting the money back. Guarantee. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. And 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 this is why men are very important, Virgil. Because I had to sit there and explain this to these stupid women. Now, if you take the money and build off of your children and your man, that's something different. But they know say they're not gonna give no money to certain men. Because you no know, men are more not they're more smart to know what to do with the fucking money. Well, they give you money, they know where it's going back. They're going back to them and some extra. But this is psychological intellectual warfare. One on one, mm-hmm. presented to you by Chaos Ring. I saw some mile away. Come look at it and say, what is in that bills when they present these things to you? What is it in that the little fine print that that puts themselves in it so they can still reap more wet um of the war? Oh, they'll still play on the double minority. They even go as far as say, 
Now we can employ some of us w with the easy loopholes. Easier now because if, if we hire, we get more in it. It's nothing and better the black community. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to the boys. Because from the Beyonce Virgil, this woman doesn't have no boy kids. She only has one kid, and it's probably a, you know, a girl or something, right? But her focus is, you know, always herself and girls. Nothing to do with the boys. And let's know saying because of that mindset alone, you, this is the reason why the community, why the boys operate and move the way they are towards other respectful men like you, you and me. And I have both parents in my life. I can't speak for anybody else, but I see the effects once you have no one present or someone that's around. You are going to develop these tendencies. You're going to develop a servitude tendencies, in my opinion. That's why they don't mind that you raise the term from 0 to 18, especially the boys. Because you feel them and send fun them from present day to systems that lock certain men in. Especially prison systems or any systems that will shut them out. Because you're selfish. You know saying that for your real survival is you have to invest in the ones that is going to produce the better outcomes. How you can produce better outcomes with just a woman and focus on just girls and dilapidate the boys. Where are you going to find mates if you're going to sit down and don't want to take the load off? These conversations not being had, Virgil. Because in their mindset, they're hoping and dreaming that Zaddy will save them. Either one from the sky or one present. So she indefinitely is protecting Zaddy at all costs. Just like the majority of them. It, is, it was only men that presented what happened to Lauren Fields in social media. That's what it brought attention. Because men brought that out. Not women. Sorry. You know why? Because when, anytime I, I, I create a monitor, anytime when you find a black woman getting harm and killed by other groups of men, and no black woman speaks about it in mass for our social media or any other outlets, this I want y'all to do. Follow me and listen good, people. Protect Zaddy at all costs. Protect <laughs> Zaddy at all costs. I think I got that from you, Virgil. I think it's you that met me that. I could be wrong. I, I, I don't think where I got that. I know I got that from somewhere from Red Stream, man. But it hit me and said, damn. They are protecting Zaddy at all costs. Mm -hmm. Like, he can't lose. My nigga. Mm -hmm. He could be dusty. He could probably, might not have nothing to offer, but you will sit there protect him at all costs because just hammer around, you're going to feel you're going to be in heaven. That is psychological mess that's psychological um rape in the mind. Yeah. That is mental illness. And mind you, there are some men that follow the same mental illness, but it has to start from somewhere. And even men, as we get older, we understand the world and where we're positioned it is in the world and we move accordingly. You know, you get that same leisure. So yeah, so that that was the take on the conversation I had. Um and if you if you were interested, you know, I send you the info on that, you know. But yeah, so like I said, that's one thing I've learned and noticed. So besides that, um, Virgil, mm -hmm. in, in your mind, um, do you feel that um, our women are going to eventually, I guess, get this white knight or this zaddy? Of wherever they dream to rescue them in their problems in this environment today in this 21st century, that it's going to be their only salvation through this our communities. Right. Um, yes and no. Okay. I say I say yes because so-called not for mention Zaddy, right? Need specifically amongst us the black woman in the position that she is in. Is for the simple fact they know they can't get to us, mm -hmm. and I say no because in this process of so-called helping them out, you know, welfare, all the stuff they haven't set for women when they absolutely blow it and do things that are very detrimental to not only the black community but the white society as a whole, they don't realize that they're being turned into slaves. They don't realize they're being used. 
basically as crash dummies, um, shock troops. I wouldn't even go as far as to say as foot soldiers for the very ideology and the very society that they claim to go against while at the same time protecting Zaddy at all costs. See, it's a weird and strange paradigm, right, because, like I said, giving, giving them a false sense of power when in actuality the only power they have is that Zaddy gives to them, and this totally obliterates the cognitive dissonance ideology of I don't need a man when they depend on Zaddy for literally everything in every aspect of their life. When they used to depend on us. And not only did they depend on us, Rain, we took care of it. We held it down. They didn't need to work. They didn't need to have to think about uh, divesting towards other groups of men. Mm. Mm. I'm going to say yes, man, no. More so, no. Because, like I said, at the end of the day, it's not like they're going to come and rescue them and when they get this uh, society that they want coming in, that they're going to, like, just make black women into, like, the rulers over black men. No, that's not, that's not how it's going to go. It's a means to an end. And at the end of the day, y'all ain't going to be, most of the black women, along with all other women, are going to be reduced to basically handmaids. The Handmaiden's Tale, uh, a TV show yeah, that I yeah. didn't know about. But I heard it's been very much interesting to those who watched it. But go on. Let me say this real quick, Ryan. I just want y'all to know that in America especially, we are and have been since the inception of this country, we have been a theocratic society. Now, the Supreme Court is set up perfectly right now to very much so bring in a government pretty much like the Republic of Gilead in The Handmaid's Tale. Just think about it like this. The Supreme Court of America, the United States Supreme Court, has nine justices. Five of them are Christian Zionists. Four of them are Jewish Zionists. So if we were to go to a full-on theocratic government where the Bible can be used and manipulated to um, impose, you know, laws and legislation on us, we've got to set up right now in America to make it happen. They know that. So that's just something just to think about. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying it's very much possible so that it could. Now think about all the actions or think about all the stuff that women, not just specifically black women, but women as a whole, but since we are black, we won't discuss black women. Just look at all the things that's being allowed to happen. Look at thought culture. Look at ratchet culture. Look at what they're promoting through the music, the imagery, the movies, the videos, you know, the uh, the selling of the products for these corporations. You know what I mean? Look at what's going on. Look at what's going on on the Internet with uh, and YouTube and social engineering with all these girls coming out talking about divesting and talking about, you know, um, swirling and, you know what I mean, uh, aborting all black babies and stuff like that. <laughs> it's, it's crazy because, like I said, Rain, and with, with the uh, under the disguise of being allowed to just do what y'all want and that is going to protect y'all, they're actually allowing y'all to somehow to uh, possibly potentially create the very environment to where they can impose something like the handmaid's tale at the expense of everyone, but under the disguise of, you know, uh, coming to save y'all, which is totally opposite of what the true intention and actual agenda is. Mm, mm, mm. And the interesting thing about all this is, a lot of people, especially our people, are not really aware of the times in and what really is down the pipe eventually, you know. And they can keep playing these goofy games on one another. And when shit get real, you're going to need someone right. to fall under or fall back, exactly. you know. And if you think that this man's inadequate, that's on you, chick. You get me? There's some men out here that will. You get me? And let's be honest. When they talk about the amount of millions that or middle class or wherever position black man is in and it's not really a heavy pot but there's some man that's out here that's working and doing what he should be doing being pro pro productive see right. one thing women understand is if you're dealing with a man that doesn't want to work or doesn't want to better himself overall means that he's at least better in his mind hell if he can take care of himself good or even try and better get some money 
then obviously you're dealing with a loser overall. And let's be honest, they entertain dudes that might have the body, but their mind's not there. And wow. they're and then and then I'm very much productive, very lazy. Even I think one time one woman posted on social media that there was a job offering for that was gonna pay roughly almost eighteen dollars an hour on the supermarket. I'm not supermarket, I think it's like a fast food restaurant. And she said she'd been posting that and trying to get certain brothers on and some of them don't wanna work there. And I'm thinking say wow. if you have not worked for a year or two, you wanna just get your foot in the door just to start be able to just to make some money and be somewhat productive just to get yourself acclimated to have good habits of working a job for now because you got to start somewhere yeah. and some don't want to do it so it seemed to me one of two things that come to mind either one they're living off a woman which some women don't mind if they give them some good dick or they're slinging and do things cr- some criminal acts on the streets which they shouldn't be doing and like I said before if you're a woman you entertain a dude that does all the above like those it's on you, sweetie. And this is why when women are left to device that they want to pick the dudes that they consider attracted to, I mean, y'all going to have to reevaluate why you are attracted to a good portion of these dudes that, I mean, if the guy's not even paying nothing, right, then he should not be getting nothing, you know? You open your legs and that guy's not even productive, you know? At least show something. I would give him credit, but if he's not doing that and you give him the, the box, I mean, it's like this. As older men, Red said the best, I said the best, and you probably said the best, that, you know, you entertain the dudes that you want to entertain, and you get the outcomes you deserve. Right. You know? To get a man that you feel that you want it, like, you got to do something different, babe. You got to do something to attract and get that man you want. And we're not talking about, say, you just sit there and just be there and present. No, you got to put in some work, sweetie. Like anything else. Looks... Get you in the door like everything else. And if you keep your body good, even better. But now I'm saying what you carry, what your character, your attitude, what you carry as a woman that will solidify the longevity of a man that's going to really take the time to invest in you. And these are wow. questions women don't really ask, ask their, themselves this. And they need to ask themselves this because, I mean, we live in the hood or the streets where, where black people reside. And either it's going to be better or worse. But still, out of that how there's some of them that's doing what they should be doing. And those ones you should probably be focused on and probably rewarding more. Because what you do to dudes that have not done or show nothing, they're going to have to show and prove something. They're going to have to be productive. As long as they get right. easy access, they don't have to do a goddamn thing. And I would say the mothers train them to be not to amount to nothing. They well. say harsh words to the son and they Call them sons to the point where they're not they're irrelevant to people in the community and possibly society if you want to go there. Right. That's not the black man's fault. Either if he stares, go, or you kick him out, whatever. You got to make the conscious effort that if you have boys or girls, especially you have both of them, that they need to be access to some man, especially if the father is still around. You go out to probably work and keep a close eye and um, joint custody with that man that you got knocked up with. It's not no excuse that you just move on to the next dude because, first of all, if that the case, you shouldn't have had a kid from the start. What you got because of lust? Because you look so good? What outcomes are you getting out of that? I look at people that something that has some sense of quiet going somewhere, you know? Instead of looking at say, well, he looks tall, nice, and cute. That's fine, but what else? Because well, you, 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 what you tell the majority of black men that you like to deal with gene swapping. What I mean? They like to exchange fluids and create some out of because of the appearance to produce what we call a pretty baby. And I tell people many times, as pretty babies produce pro- produce functional people in society as a whole, I, I, I don't really recall that. People that, that produce, they produce something that, something that they could potentially bring through this union. I produce something with work. Not something because of looks. That's superficial. That's that's retardation. That's nonsense. But that's how we are as a community, you know? And when the men keep talking about this and express this to the, the ladies, it's not to demean it, but the, to really have you really really think about this. You get me? Because now you point wow. every black man as what you're sexually attracted to as all men. And most women 
all the groups women, they look at you as stupid. They'll laugh at you actually behind your back. When you, when yeah. they hear you talk about this about black men through social media. Regardless of what the black men say about you, but they hear when they, you talk about black men in some way, they can look at something wrong with you overall. Because they know say majority of these boys that really act like that that you complain about, who really nurtured and raised these boys? Exactly. Now, if, if the father had full custody of the boys and they came out the same way, then we have a different argument. But that's what I'm saying. Yes. Go ahead, Virgil. No, and, and I was about to say that's that I couldn't agree with you more, bro. And that's that's a part of the indoctrination. And they, you got to think this goes back to slavery times, man. This is when black men were literally sexually molested and assaulted right in front of their wives and children. And you, y'all got to be able to understand the uh, the psychosis involved with that and the psychology involved with that. And so this has been literally grafted into their psyche, literally into the very DNA, to have this disdain towards black men. And it comes, that's where it stems from. So they, in turn, raise the very males that they've been indoctrinated to rat on, tell on, and protect Zaddy at all costs from. It's a very, very, very diabolical paradigm, right? Very, very diabolical. And we can see now, as far as what's going on on YouTube especially, how sick, how pervasive and invasive this indoctrination has become. You know what I'm saying? Just like, shout out to Mr. Farmer, man. He talks about son husbands and he talks about you know the um he came up with the term baby mama terrorist and that's i mean I, and i respect that term for this reason right because it's very fitting y'all have become uh made to become basic terrorists especially towards the only man right the only group of men who actually really marry y'all and want to be with y'all regardless of the indoctrination that y'all have been so subjected to over the past few hundred years, especially. Yeah, and with this mental illness, um, it is spread and has come and has played its course amongst black society now in this new century and in the first generation of the 21st century. And the only thing I see moving forward is more destruction amongst us people here in the West. Um, yeah. Karch Woodson said it best that if I control a man's thinking, I have to worry about his actions. Now, he said men, but you always got to keep in mind that you have to look at both genders because he controls both you and me, mine. And what we do, we are creating the back doors to our reality. So even right there, people are not aware of what you're thinking and moving can be your destruction, you know? He doesn't know what you're going to do. You're going to do it because he already infects infect your psyche of what is beauty, reality, and what is manhood and womanhood. When we look at manhood right. and womanhood, we are looking at it through the eyes of the European. You get me? And if we look and understand his culture and what he is, he brings only death and destruction. And that's a fact. So how the hell that's are we going to sit there and say – really say we're going to protect him at all costs, and he has a history of destroying nations and groups of cultures with a smile on his face. That's backwards. Now, mm-hmm. oh, and we have one caller. So we will take this call, because I'm going to raise a hand. Um, the call number for tonight's show is 717-908-1834, access code 917-324-POUND. Chaos Reign presents... Protect Zaddy at all costs. All right, first caller. I open up. All right, caller, you there? Hey, what's going on, Gary? How you doing? Oh, what's good? I'm Jay NYC. I'm a J N Y C. Sorry. Yeah. What's going on, man? Um, thanks for keeping the lights on. A good show. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a question related, or not question. Um kind of something kind of uh, connecting to what you guys are talking about as far as the virtual uh, reality okay. world, yes. the meta mm-hmm. world. Yeah, so go I ahead. just wanted to, to, I don't know if the brother's seen it. It's, like I said, it's really not a question, but maybe it, it kind of split in two, right? There's one movie, well, there's 
two, two to three movies that I remember that I was looking up as you guys were speaking that, that kind of connects to what you were saying. So I, I just want to name them and, and maybe people out there that are listening do their research on it. Uh, Brain Scan, right? This was a movie that was done in the 90s. If you haven't seen it, maybe you want to check that out. There's another movie called Trancers. That's another movie that has to do with going into the future and things with computers. But the most important one that I would say that connects with what the brother was saying that, that, that you know, is leading to that type of uh, scenario, reality, would be this movie called Strange Days. It was released in the 90s, and one of the stars of it happens to be Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. And, um, Yes, and, and and just real quick, I don't want to burn it, but again, it's called Strange Days, and it's about this, uh, uh, you know, this guy. He's supposed to be a cop or something, but he's putting this little uh, machine on his brain, right? And that's lets him see things and all this type of stuff. I don't know if it's, he sees what's going to happen or he sees, you know, uh, uh, certain things that's going on. And it again, it has to do with computer chips and things like that. So this was done in, in, in 95, and moving forward, we see that we're going towards those directions. So I, I just wanted to mention those three and good good uh, 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 conversation and subject matter that you guys are touching on in general, but I just wanted to kind of add that in and maybe if the brother even seen those, those, those films, you know? Well, I've definitely seen Strange Days. I remember when it first came out. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was basically, and see that that right there, that movie right there was the progenitor for what Elon Musk is doing over there at his company. He had he has called Neuralink, and uh, yeah, neuro, everybody a neuro can chip, go a chip. Yeah, break that down, brother. Yeah. That's I'm glad you, yeah. you seen that. Can you break that down? What you talking about? What Elon Musk is, is doing? Yes, I can definitely break that down. Now Elon Musk has a company called Neuralink. And uh, their main um, objective of there is to create technologies that um, will support human brain computer interfacing. Now, this is linking us up to the smart grid metaverse. And uh, what this is, he has a product he's been in R&D for the past couple of years called Neural Lace or Neural Mesh. This is literally fiber optic mesh that will be implanted on top of the brain that will allow for easy connection to the human brain to computers. And the only way you can be able to do this is because the human brain is a computer. Uh, I would even go as far as to say that the human brain is the most advanced computer. It is a biological quantum computer, mm. right? And, uh, with, and with Neuralink, what Elon Musk is doing is he's basically creating the very technology that's going to be used to immerse us even deeper into the metaverse. Now, we have Mark Zuckerberg over there who has Oculus. He bought Oculus nine years ago. So now he has a patent or bought the company that will allow for the visual interface into the metaverse while Elon Musk is creating the um, all the neural, inclusive. The, ne- the neural. The neural. You know what I mean? Entire neural. Because when you hook the when you hook the uh, uh, computer chips to the computer brain, you'll have access to all the input devices that the brain uh, uses, a uh, touch, taste, smell, hearing, sight. So, you know, we, we get into some very, very uh, 50 times now with this technology. And as far as um, we've been desensitized to this for a long time. Like I said, we, we've been led to we believe that this newer generation is is uh, more successful to it, and that could be true in some aspects. But when we think about when we were kids, we were just as programmed. You know what I mean? We just was just as programmed, but the, it's just the technology is more advanced and it's more invasive. It's right in our face now. We got easy access to it. Or should I say, and now it's, it's got easy access to us. Mm. So this is why, and this is why I tell people to watch out for guys like Elon Musk. Elon Musk on the front. On the, on the cover, he said, we got to watch out for AI. AI can be dangerous. But he goes and creates a company that's going to support the very connection of the human brain to this very artificial intelligence. So you got to look at guys like Elon Musk with a side eye, right, and then look who he's funded by, look what he supports, 
what he advocates for, and then ask yourself, is Elon Musk really on our side? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Good, 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 uh, good information, brother. Um, like I said, you know, good, good subject matter, and I, I'll be listening in. Thanks for keeping the lights on, Gary. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, too, Thank brother. You already know. Thank you. Make sure Thank you me. go subscribe to A Real Talk Podcast on YouTube, man. Mm hmm. Oh, and let everybody know if you're listening, I will put that in the description at the end of this stream. So don't worry. Right. Yeah, I will find Virgil Berry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, I give the call one more time. 717-908-1834. Access code 917-324-POUND. Today's subject, title, Chaos Rain Presents. Protect Zaddy at all costs. Now, moving forward. Um, the Pookie, the Ray Ray, and the Lane. I have noticed, Virgil... If you've been noticing what's going on for social media and yeah. YouTube and etc., we have in the same discussion, and now I'm noticing, and this is just me, that there's a slowly turmoil between manospheres, especially black masters, in regards to the same talk about the Pookie and Ray Ray and the Lame argument again. And but before we go into it, I'd ask you this question. Maybe you can answer this. What has the Pookie and Ray Ray really done today in in regards to something tangible or what he has really done for us as a a people, black culture, black race, et cetera? That's something that um really really I, I, this is a question I always ask because I know people say that the Pookie Rays get everything, the women, the attention, also, but I always ask what does this Pookie Ray really done? You know, I don't know if you can answer if you want to, you know, entertain that question. You know, well, I mean, I'll answer to the best of my ability. How about that? Okay. And okay. Uh, as far as what they have done, now, see, given my record, so to speak, I could probably mm -hmm. be considered to be a Pookie or a Ray Ray. And it's just one of these things, man. The Pookie and Ray Ray, it's a, it's an ideology. It's a, um, it's an avatar. It's, it could be considered a residual self-image. Think of it as a computer program, since we're talking about Elon Musk and all them just not too long ago. It's an identity that people can be, uh, that you can adhere to or you can identify with, and it's also something that um, that you can see in your observed reality. Now, the name Pookie and Ray Ray, that's just to give it the connotation to automatically associate it with black people. When you think about it in the wide society, Pookie and Ray Ray's the computer program expands across all races, but we're talking specifically about black people. And uh, what have they done, so to speak? Just think about it. A lot of successful people, like we were talking about on Riffs, so earlier, uh, the Pookie and Ray Rays have created the most influential form of music known to man today, and that's hip-hop. You know okay. what I'm saying? So to, okay. to sit here and say that these Pookie and Ray Ray archetypes haven't really contributed nothing but just massive children, which is true to an extent too. But on the other aspect, they also created the very thing that's being used to promote and promulgate this so-called negative connotation of being a Pookie and a Ray Ray. See, that's where the cognitive dissonance comes in right there. You know what I mean? And that's the inversion right there. Because in all actuality, the Pookie and the Ray Rays, especially of the black race, so to speak, tend to be the ones with the strongest genetics, tend to be the ones who, uh, you know, repopulate the population. They tend to be the ones who build things from the ground up that actually matter. They tend to be the ones that are independent and don't depend on Zaddy for anything. You know, like I said in Red's comment section earlier. Hey, say that again. Say that again for those who are not really aware of that. Can you repeat that? No, I, I said it so fast. I <laughs> no, I, I just want people to be clear, you know, because, you know, you know, it goes from one ear and the other. You know, repetition is key. Just go ahead. Right, go right. Ahead. But basically, you know, with this Pookie and Ray Ray thing, like I say, 
Pookie and Ray Ray as the we can, we can think of it as a computer program. You know what I'm saying? An identity marker, uh, an ideology. You know what I'm saying? The Pookie and Ray Ray is associated with like, like they expand across all races, but specifically when it comes to black people, Pookie and Ray Ray is uh, associated with negative connotations. When in fact, and here's the inversion: the Pookie and Ray Rays are the ones. Who, like I said, created the most influential, most influential genre of music, which is oddly enough being used to promote the negative connotations of the Pookie and Ray Ray identity marker. You know what I'm saying? So, and um, and I'm just about to say, you know, when we think about Pookie and Ray Ray, that's just people who are not part of the bourgeoisie business class. You know, the guys who didn't go to college. You know. Think of the Pookie and Ray Ray's as the blue collar aspect. You know what I mean? Or the blue collar people who we consider to be blue collar workers, or if we want to take it to the streets, people like me and my, when I used to be selling drugs and stuff. But this, and, and like I said, but the Pookie and Ray Ray's are the ones who repopulate the population with children, albeit by nefarious sometimes means. But when we're looking at it from a basic standpoint of survival. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going on. And not only that, these guys also, um, not all Pookies and Ray Rays, so to speak, it's not all negative. You know what I mean? And that's the crazy part about it. And But people who, uh, you, when you think of the term Pookie and Ray Ray, you automatically associate that with a, a bum black guy who's living off a woman or a guy who's in the street selling drugs when actually Pookie and Ray Ray actually expands from that aspect and you know, um, into the spectrum, up in that spectrum at the end to the other end of the spectrum where the Pookie and Ray Rays are the very people who created hip hop and actually are the ones who um, are part of the blue collar and even white collar at some point level. And other so thing, you forgot this. You forgot to say that they don't depend on Zaddy. That's what yeah, 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 that's what you was, they, and they don't depend on Zaddy. That's the key thing right there. That's the key thing. See, these mm-hmm. corporate business class guys, they want to be where Zaddy is at and almost willing to do anything, sell us out, Pookie and Ray Rays, right, to get mm-hmm. there. But the Pookie and Ray Rays can amass to be just as, if not more successful than these Boots Ross Reed guys, right, without having to depend on Zaddy. Now, let me say what I was about to say. You could say that O.W. Gurley, who founded Black Wall Street, you could say he was a Pookie and Ray Ray. He had numerous children by numerous women, women, but he also operated outside of the power structure of Zaddy. He was a very dangerous person in these early days, in the early 20s, to this system. And he's, like I, say, like I said in real chat earlier, he could be considered a progenitor or pre-Pookie and Ray Ray. And mind you, O.W. Gurley was a billionaire. Mind you. He was a billionaire. I did not know that. Not, I didn't talk about that. No, let me say anything about that. Listen, I'm not talking about had a lot of money because he did. No, I'm talking about O.W. Gurley was rivaling that of the Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, the Schiffs, the Ro- Warburgs, Rockefellers. He was in. He could be compared to them. These guys in Black Wall Street were very, very wealthy. And they could not, you know, and and this is where, well, I say he could be considered to be a Pookie Ray Ray because when you do your research on who the O.W. Gurley was, he had numerous children. He had numerous, basically, families. And this is why, with the help of movies like The Color Purple, why the black male image was being decimated like it was because although these guys were having extramarital affairs and creating families, these guys were wealthy at the same time. You know, pay attention to Mr. in the color purple. He owned land. Mm. Mm. I wonder if everybody ever thought about that. He owned land and not just like a little plot. He owned acres. All right. So in this, in this, see, and look at the indoctrination and the inversion. See why we've been made to focus on him being a dude who just was some kind of a pedophile or whatever, whatever, whatever. You can think whatever you want to think, but at the same time, look at what I just said, though. That man owned property. That man had money. 
You know what I'm saying? He didn't need to depend on Zaddy. You know, and, and and when you look at it from that aspect, you can see how far this Pookie and Ray Ray ideology goes. Wow. Wow. See, and it's that's why I kind of asked that question, and I kind of like how you lay out and explain it in detail. Then, And I'm not sure anybody else could have broke down as thorough as you, Virgil. And I've learned some because I got to know – that during a time before the destruction of Black Wall Street, over a hundred years, going on now, hundred and one years now, in the summertime, that that's what this one black man, and he probably had other groups of black men, that when they built Black Wall Street in Oakland, Tulsa, that these men had immense wealth, and they saw this, and they saw it grow where other nations were wanted to do business with right. that part of America. You can't right. afford that. Because now I say, wait, mm-hmm. these black people in this small little section in the Midwest doing this? And now nations are doing willing to business and, and and bring money to us? Oh, right. hell no. Uh-uh. We got to sort that out. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. And, and the illest part of body rain is that this black Wall Street wasn't the only black Wall Street. These pockets of black people who are very wealthy and building their own cities and towns and, and, and communities and, and uh, you know, uh, economies, they all operated outside of the power structure of the Federal Reserve. I'm talking about Tulsa. Right here in Columbus, Ohio, we have the class, we have the, uh, the Mount Vernon area, uh, Harlem in New York, Rosewood. Uh, I mean, and the, the list just goes on and on and on and on. You know what I mean? And these towns, these developments, these communities, if you think about it, they were founded, funded by Pookies and Ray Ray. Mm. None of these guys, none of these guys were part of the bourgeoisie business class. They weren't, Mm. they didn't go to college, so they weren't indoctrinated. They weren't part of Greek letter fraternities, and they were not in the fraternal orders or organizations. They were fully independent, ex, ex, um, some of them slaves. Most of them just were good businessmen who came from good families. Because contrary to popular opinion, most of our ancestors do not originate from Africa. They originate from right here in America. Okay. So you know what I mean, and that's a that's a key aspect to this whole thing. Because like I say, O. W. Gurley and his homeboys that created Black Wall Street in Tulsa, they did not go to college. They didn't go through the the machine of the new system coming in like guys like W. E. B. Du Bois did. No, we got Marcus Booker, Garvey. Yeah. Yeah. Go um, like Booker T. Washington, if you remember, and I was, I, don't think, I, 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 I didn't know if he went to school, but I know he created. He did. Oh, he did. Um, I know he created. Booker T. Washington. Post, Booker T. Yeah, Washington. He, Booker, Booker T. Washington's Alpha Phi Alpha, the same fraternity that Martin Luther King was in. And, okay. and not to mention, <laughs> Booker T. Washington is a Prince Hall Freemason, where he was. Hmm. So he I was controlled I... opposition. Okay, okay, okay. I, I don't know if the book Up From Slavery, that, that information was revealed, because I have that book. I didn't really read it, but I know that the background of him probably illustrate more of his life of life of Booker T. Washington, and I think, I don't know if it was that the book you read to find that out, but if they didn't really reveal that, and that's telling, because those things are very important to know the history of a lot of great people that came amongst us, you know, that did right. things. And if you look at the ones that were in fraternities and bourgeoisies or, you know, Alpha Sigma and stuff, that eventually, they do eventually wake up and start to have a, a change of direction, or doing some alter than what they were trained to do. And you know what happens that they meet their end, like everything else. Right. Right. And yes, Martin Luther King was uh, in a fraternity because he is a pastor. And those are he was a Prince Hall Freemason. He was a Prince Hall Freemason as well. Yes. Yeah. And the funny thing with his movement at the time before he started changing now, that he went outside the order. And we all know once you go outside the order, the only reward you get is death. That's it. And he that's it. So when Booker T. Washington, and I'm going to tell you a secret about him. 
He died in New England, Connecticut in 1915. Right. Mysteriously. And the word on the street with Booker T. Washington, I, and I, have, I think I found a clip on this by Ron Herka. He interviewed a woman that knows a little more about his history, is that they poisoned the man. And the reason why, because they find that this man was moving outside the order than what they want him to do. Because he already knew that the times for the Negro in America was not looking good on the path. Same for Martin. And you know what age he started to realize this? I think he was in this 1956? He was just about to be six years old. He started to change it as he's reaching, you know, the stage where some men start to transition off this earth. And to me, that's a little late, but I respect what he did up to the point. You get me? That say, well, you know, yeah, he was this, but I was looking at the works and say, certain things, most black men that came and gone could do better. But because the times they were in, they didn't really know how to move in this environment for the best interest of black people at the time. And well, so when when you see the change, you have to respect the the failure, the coonery, and the change of many of many men because we all one time were fooled and we eventually had to eventually wake up eventually you get me what and the ones that wake up and say I'm doing something different and try to do some effective now that I got the audience it can't be too late if not careful what? Marcus Garvey as you know he never went to school but he did took some classes back then here and he came to America because of the works of Booker T. Washington you get me because in his mind what a man from Jamaica coming up here, he wanted to learn to build what? Institutions. Right. Because he knows that real growth and structure of improving people, you have to create an institution where they can learn and facilitate their abilities. You get me? Which is not a bad yeah. idea. Because right. how do you think how you think indoctrination starts? Through the institution. Right. So if right. if Marcus Garvey knew this, it lets me know to ask a question, another question, because we talk about the Pookies rate, the lanes. Right. In regards, to what is so unique, or what the lanes have not really done as well? This is the opposite question. I would focus on lanes. From your view, what has the lane done for the progress of Black people? That's my question. If you want to be honest, absolutely nothing. Mm. What institution? What institution has this? What we call educated lanes, bourgeoisie business class of Negroes. What have they actually created that is for the benefit of Black people? Now let's go back in history real quick. I'm gonna give you some organizations: the Urban League, the NAACP, and. Um, What's the other one I'm thinking about here? Um, oh, okay, I just had it on the tip of my tongue, too, man. Uh, uh, it'll come to me, but just, let's, let's focus on these two real quick. Seemingly, we would like to believe that they were funded and created by black men, right? But they weren't. These institutions were specifically designed to do what they're now currently doing. So when it comes to the bourgeoisie business class, they actually haven't done anything because the things that they actually have created or have been put on the face of creating, they were funded by the very system that they were supposed to be allegedly trying to expose or break away from or whatever you want to call it, right? Okay, on the other hand, though, right, we had the Pookies and Ray Rays who are not part of that system and have actually built things like actual cities and communities. So that, that's another paradigm right there. You know what I'm saying? So when it, so I mean, they, I, I mean, if they answer the question even further, just to say it but flat out, they really ain't done nothing but perpetuate the very, um, the very system that they was allegedly trying to, like I say, expose or advocate to be fair with. 
And so another different. Let me just say this real quick too. Right? Just think about this, y'all. Think about all the HBCUs, none of which were funded and founded by black people. Absolutely not one. It's about yep. 30-something so-called college universities and the so-called HBCU, and none of them were founded or funded by black people, and most of them were even named after the very white people that these guys are supposed to be trying to be cool and fair with or make things better for black people on the behalf of when they were working in the exact opposite. But I This is what has not been taught to us in these what I call perception programming prisons that they got the nerve to call higher institutes of education. And it's sad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, when I look at information about all these historic black colleges, some probably are good, but when I look at overall that these were designed and funded and created for the mulattoes that your so-called zaddy created just to educate the bastard child that he, he produced. Indoctrinate. Yeah, indoctrinate, sorry. Indoctrinate the child that he produced or helped produce, you know. So... And let you know, saying that institution is a very much important element for nourishing and I would say um, creating the same people that you want to be in society. Matter of fact, institutions last longer than anything else. If you want to go yes. deep, you know. So I understand why they have these institutions. Now I'm looking in the chat room. <laughs> I know it's one person. I'm not sure if it's a woman or a man. But they said this. Uh, most black folks did not go to college black back then. Most black men still don't. Now I'm not sure if there's some thing you try and post out there, um, person in the comment section. There are black men that's in college, you know. Right. The ones that don't, they're doing some else, either trades or or etc. Mm-hmm. You gotta understand. The college institution to black men of 20th century and 21st century did not serve a purpose in regards to really taking what I like to call power off other men. It's never designed for that. You can go there and get your degree and probably work for him, but in regards to him really nourishing and taking his power, that's not what it's really designed for. Now, I'm not saying people should go to college because, you know, you got to function in society and you got to do what you got to do. But overall, if you think you're going to get some serious change at turns around in his institutions for his indoctrination, no. That's not happening. Absolutely not going to happen. Yeah. And for one reason and one reason only, right? Because it's not designed to. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And how I look at it is that, and now mind you, even when I did content um Virgil about the college debt and all that stuff, mm-hmm. there's even rumors now how they're begging our president as in now to really put some pause in place to relinquish or relieve people of debt of student loans. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking saying, why would he want to do that? And he's not gonna do that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you why. Because if you remember back in two thousand eight we had a a crash. And within right. that crash Certain policy had to put in place that people are going to have to start paying up for the money that America has lost in the form now we're running off of credit. And one of those same stipulations that came to play back in 2009 going on 2010 is they now put in a play policy where you cannot default on student loan debt. What? That's intentional because we're running on credit. If you default on student loan debt, you can easily get what you want and don't have to worry about paying back anybody. They can't have that. They gotta make money. They know that most majority of Americans can't pay for college. I'm sorry. It was never designed. It's only designed for a few. And the answer, it should be designed for a few, because look at the outcome it produced. It produced worker bees for other people. Straight worker bees. Like like I said earlier in Red's chat, right? <clears throat> J.D. Rockefeller. I don't want a nation of thinkers 
on the nation of workers. Now, the reason why I say that, because John D. Rockefeller is the guy who funded and founded the National Education Association. The current system under which we have been under since the, what, past going on 100 years now? Yeah, it, it's, it, and I think this book's on the Rockefellers, the history of it, um, and people could look more in information. Even the Rockefellers also created what we call the medical establishment that people indulge in today. He, he created from right. that back a century ago. And the reason why, because he right. knows that for his criminal empire, because he was criminals, Rockefellers were, were criminals, if people look at right history, they had they had to take their criminal activity and make it legit. Because you cannot survive in this Western Hemisphere for criminality alone. And we all know that there's no reward for um, thieves amongst thieves. So what you do, you have to start finding something that people really need and take fully control over it. And mind you, they had the money at that time. And now they're like probably a billionaire worth network Rockefellers that still exists today. And they do this because they know, say, I got to do two things. I got to control the institutions or create the institutions that people are going to always eat off my hand, depend on me, which is health, and we could say education. So, oh, not if, to mention the Rockefeller family is also responsible for welfare as well, too. So that's just funny. It's a perfect, perfect um, uh, example of synchronicity here because you just brought up health education and we have a department called HEW, which is Health Education and Welfare, all three of which the Rockefeller family, along with other families, help to fund and create. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you have where what is the real hands of control. And it goes back to, again, people, you are protecting Zaddy at all costs, especially the at system. At all costs. You know what I'm saying? You, and you got to because he's your God. And here's the funny thing. It makes sense why women will be entertaining institutions because who's the best vehicle for control that's going to control the kids? A woman. The first so, teachers of the children. Yeah. Yeah. So it's intentional when they tell us, say, we, when the men are asking, you need to, to fund this resource to the boys to help build the boys. They're supposed to fight you back. They're supposed to have a problem. Because now you are diversifying their control over the boys. Right. Why would a mother think it's not in the best interest to put money to really help build their sons up so they can have better men or build better men? Especially when you decide right. to raise your children by yourself, by choice now. Right. I'm not talking about abandonment. I'm not talking about the man walk out. If some men do it, okay. But is it majority all men? Absolutely not. Regardless if there's consequences not. Because most men, once they pick a woman and have kids with her, he knows the importance that he has to be involved because he wants something better for not only his daughters, but his sons, especially his sons. He wants his sons to do better and exceed him. That's the problem when you remove men out of households because men are going to hold you to a standard. They're not wow. going to pull strings. They're going to tell as is and take action with actual punishment. You know, so when when you find that when most males, yeah, they're gonna buck up on their father. It's natural, but at times a father keep puts his own son back in place. Let him know, say you gotta stay in the boy's place, and your time will be ready in time. You get me? For your own protection. Yes, the men that don't have that thinking and action, we know where they were trained and raised from. You get me? That's yes, why, sir. for our community to be better, you got to know the role you play, ladies, as well, you know. And I think you don't see the importance of it because this environment, this is comfort. And you know how Negroes, when they get comfortable, they become lazy and don't do nothing. Matter of fact, they'll, they'll stay comfortable as long as they can. But once they feel real stress and the pressure applies and they get really uncomfortable, that's when they have to take actual action. Majority of Americans, especially us as people, we're very complacent, lazy, and comfortable. That's why the system operates and does what it does, not only behind your backs, but now in front of your face now. Because they don't say you're not going to do nothing. You're going to be comfortable. Right. So anyway. Right. Anyway, so wait, somebody's on the line. Who's that? Hello? 
I see some. Yeah, you still Jay up in here. Oh, you said okay, okay. All right. Um, I think that's all the questions I I laid out. Um, Virgil, this is a a pretty well structured show. I think I I was pleased with this show. To be honest with you, it's been a while, man. Well, so I had a guest to really, you know, ask the questions and really lay out in detail a response to every question that was given. Well, you know. Well, and, you know, not not many people that I have on here, but I do try people sometimes on the show when I can't, you know, in well, good faith, you know. But overall, right. this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Um, Jay, you have any last questions since you're online? Jay and YC? No, I mean, I, I was I was I was listening in, absorbing, you know, and just just taking notes, bro. Good good show, like I said before. All right, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that, brother. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. So any. Closing remarks or any thoughts? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, of course. Uh, for one, you know, chaos rain. Shouts out to you. Uh, I'm honored and blessed, you know what I'm saying, to have the opportunity and the privilege to come, you know, and chop up gang with you on your platform. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully in the future you come over to my platform and we're going to do it again. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. that's very possible. And uh, I just like, you know, the whole purpose of me coming to YouTube is not about no money or nothing. I'm a I'm a, a very intelligent, intuitive guy. Uh, the city where I'm from, I got a lot of connections with people, and I'm I'm doing decent for myself. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I don't. It's not about money with me. It's for basically to get this information out, because as we can all see, we're being hit from all angles with all types of indoctrination and you know social engineering and uh, the society that's being brought in. You know what I mean? It's not just designed for just us black people. It's designed for all of us. So while it's good to focus on, you know, black issues, so to speak, we have to be able to connect and correlate how these issues uh, spread out to mass society. And uh, to have these conversations and discuss these issues and topics on this platform not only takes courage, but as we can see, it's starting to have an impact. We can see the big divide, like we discussed earlier on Red Show. We can see the divide and how the age of provocateurs amongst us, once again, just like back in our, uh, after Reconstruction, we see that they are infiltrating the so-called streets, again, you know, by trying to demonize us with terminology like pookies and ray rays. And I just think it's very important for us to have these conversations and have different minds come together and chop up this game because there's a lot of people out there who are not privy to this information who have been through these very institutions and have been programmed with these ideologies, mostly the women, females, you know what I mean? And uh, when they hear this information, it's kind of like, like I say, like sensory overload and the first instinct due to the indoctrination reign is to fight back and protect Zaddy at all costs. So it's a perfect topic, perfect title of the show. And also, let me say this in closing, too. My bad. Go ahead. No, go go ahead. Uh, uh, Like I said, go subscribe to the page, A Real Talk Podcast on YouTube. That's A-Y-E, Real Talk Podcast. You know what I mean? And uh, Just tap in and support. And that's what we need to do. We need to start linking up with each other, like-minded people. We need to start interacting with each other, supporting each other, having each other on each other's platforms, no matter how big or small. Because everybody who is, um, you know, a person who has a certain intellect about them has something important to say. And you don't necessarily have to be from the bourgeoisie business class or have gone through the meat grinder machine of the academic machine. Because as most of us are coming to this space here on YouTube, the majority of us who really got real good info and game to drop on y'all, we didn't go to college. We lived life experiences. And this is why I say, Rain, that with Kevin Samuels and all them, with the situation that's going on with them, uh, y'all got to come pay homage to us. Because at the end of the day, like we're going to have to protect these females, we're going to have to protect y'all too. Right? What, what, what business class is the class that protects the wider society? All right, just think about the movie The Hunger Games. Who out there in the field? That's the police state. It ain't the people in the capital. So, you know, y'all got to come pay homage, man. And like I say, we're man, agent provocateurs abound. 
You know what I'm saying? So when we come to these black guys who are coming in here who are trying to, you know, separate and divide with the terminologies and the ideologies of like Pookies and Ray Rays and trying to make it seem like the Pookies and Ray Rays is this and this and that, when actually the Pookie and Ray Rays are the ones that are actually going to build the society if it ever wants to be built, you can see that divide. You can see the indoctrination. And these guys, most of them are agent provocateurs. And when you do research into who they are, you see that they are part of these organizations. You hear me talk about the Divine Nine, the Blue A, and all these uh, uh, the masonry type situations and stuff like that, and all type of secret societies and stuff like that, where they are under the boot strap. You know what I'm saying? They're under the, the they're under the boot of Zaddy. So like I said, Ren, it was a perfect title for the discussion tonight because, and when we dig deep into this, we'll even go to see that it's not even white guys, not even white people who are culprits. They're actually, if you look at it, when you do this information and you find out some stuff out, they're actually just as victims to this system as we are. And the real culprits are the ones that's being heavily protected that we're not allowed to talk about. And if you have a foresight to know what I'm talking about, without me without me saying what I just saying you know, with me saying what I just said, you could probably sift through that and know what I'm talking about. And that's another topic for another day. Okay, okay. And like always, you know. Oh, and one thing: this is your first time ever been interviewed on any broadcasts, Virgil Berry? Uh, yeah, I gotta say, yeah. Oh, good. So, like I said, well, that's an honor and it, a privilege. It's gonna go down in history, right? Well, I said earlier in the broadcast that I'm not sure where your channel, where you, your journey is going to take, but I know that with many people that either content creators or social media advocates or whatever, that you're going to do something, and it's going to be something that's going to be changing for the hearts and minds of people. And like I said, it's always good to have anybody that is going to be that that change that person that's going to change the psyche and mindset of people. And I'm proud of it, you know. And that's one thing, if I had to say anything out of the Cast Rain channel, that, you know, I do bring guests and I find people and I have the conversation on this. Now, am I the only one on YouTube? I don't think so. But like no. always, with small things, we'll eventually grow into something special. So yes. I, I thank you, Virgil, for being a guest. For tonight's show, and like always, um, I'm definitely I'm already subscribed, and you know, like I said, I'm hoping once you start putting down the content and making the time, it's gonna be wonderful. Trust me, trust me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I, I expect. Like I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's finish. Yeah. Like um, I I expect by around this year, um, if you did not hit 1K subscribers, I will be shocked. But like I said, once you put out the content. And be stay firm on what you're doing. It will grow. Trust me. You have a network. I mean, you have Red Supreme and other brothers, and I yeah. see only growth. You get me? It's gonna be a it's I'm gonna be a fight, a uphill battle because you know we did. Oh, I'm YouTube. built for it, man. I'm built you, you, for it. YouTube, you know, YouTube is they will yeah. try to do everything possible to stop certain growth so real people real right. talk. But nonetheless, the message has to be put out nonetheless. So, thank you, Virgil, for being a guest for tonight's show. I appreciate it. No, and hell, you, if I, I appreciate you for the opportunity. Yeah. And hell, if I do know anything else or anything that I want to talk about, I'll shoot you a text, like always, you know. You know. Right. But we we we'll we, you know, everything will be good. So thank you, Virgil. No problem. Yeah. Take care. And you know, like I said, um everybody subscribe to Virgil Berry's channel. I'll put it, the links in the description. All right, take care, Virgil. All right, you too, brother. I'll talk to you. All right. And now I thank everybody for listening to tonight's broadcast. And the title speaks for itself. I hope you have a clear understanding and learn something from this. That yes, there are men in our groups that will protect Zaddy. And there are a lot of women that will protect Zaddy. Nonetheless, who you protect is who you love, cherish, and nourish. Keep that in mind that why are you protecting someone that does not see the interest in bettering yourself and the group? History has been proven with research that it is never in our favor and never will. So for those of us that continue to protect them and still cape and protect them to either get access to the wallet 
or even get access to him genetically. It is what it is. But none other than that, you know, I leave people to, you know, marinate on that. Um, so that is it. I'd like to thank everybody for listening to tonight's broadcast. Um, if you're new to Chaos Rain channel, thank you. And those that will be new, please hit the red button and hit the top bell for notifications of uploads and live streams on the Chaos Rain channel. You can also follow me on Twitter at Chaos Rain 7 and add me as a friend on Facebook, Eric Rain on Facebook. And those are the links. Thank you all for listening. Be on the lookout for the next broadcast. Until next time, take care and good night.